Hello friends, welcome to the school of sports. Today I will talk about Formula 1 rules. Basically there are two types of people in this world. One who said why do even people watch Formula 1 and second who said wow why people don't watch Formula 1 and I will take you from why to wow. So let's talk about the people who think why do people watch Formula 1. So the people who think why do people watch Formula 1 what they think is Formula 1 is a racing in which cars race against each other on a track where they are going at a very high speed they overtake each other they run in circle and whoever comes first wins the race and it's pretty boring i totally get to you but there is so much more than just that there is a car setup based upon track and then there's a grid position depends upon qualification there's a race strategy and then adjustment based upon weather so there are many more things once you understand all these beautiful elements of the sport you will for sure fall in love with the sport and you will be able to appreciate the sport way more than what you do today on a high level each team has two cars and there are 10 teams that means 20 cars and then in a year they race 17 times on 17 different tracks no two tracks are same they are different and in each race they accumulate points they win points at the end of the season they have two trophies one is a constructors championship so the team that wins maximum points wins this trophy and there's a driver's championship so the driver who wins maximum point wins the driver's championship let's talk about the most important factor the car so each team let's take a ferrari ferrari is a team who's competing for a long time they would have two drivers that means they have two cars and with those two cars they have around 50 team members who travel with them to 17 different tracks their job is to make the car make the changes take the data make the enhancements a lot of work goes on apart from those 50 members there are around 200 to 1500 engineers who work in the factory so it's not just a driver who's racing there's a lot of people who contribute to the racing the top car is red bull and the bottom one is mercedes car they might look same but they are different so if we talk about these cars these cars are the pinnacle of the sport pinnacle of engineering just to take you one example there is a brake disc so whenever they break the disc gets heated and the temperature of this can go up to thousand degrees celsius 1832 degree fahrenheit that's really hot so to cool down they use the front wing so that the air moves in such a way it cools down the disc so that is the level of engineering also they use these wings to deviate the air so that it doesn't hit the tires and car can move fast if you look at those two pieces of these two cars you will notice that there are differences this is very minor difference only when I pointed it you can see yeah there is a difference and similarly I can point at different parts of the car and show you the difference but it will take me ages so let's move on to the next piece another cool engineering feature that is there in formula one so here I'm showing you in principle the engineering principle to give you a flavor of the pinnacle of engineering here whenever car is stopping they use the brakes and whenever they hit the brake that energy is transmitted into the battery and battery gets charged once battery is charged and car is moving they can use that energy pump it to the engine and then engine can rev that energy into the wheels and it can go blazing out so it, the pinnacle of engineering is insane here you can see the amount of control driver needs to do this is the steering wheel there is insane amount of control driver can do he can control how much brake he need to apply in the front wheel in the back wheel and they change it based upon the turn every turn they might change the braking ratio they might change the air that is going into the engine the engine performance the air so it's just amazing all you would know is a driver can drive car fast or driving slow that's upon the driver's ability now the car is very critical and the car has been changing over the years this is how it would look like in 1972 they have the regulation so each team need to build the car within the regulation 
Then car changed in 1979. In 1991, they made more changes and the cars are more aerodynamic. In 96, cars are even better. So over the years, regulation changed and car have also changed. So you would see the transition. So the car is very important. A worst driver in the best car can beat the best driver in the worst car. That is the level of importance of car. So car is very critical. Let's talk about the track which is equally important. So there are many tracks and all tracks are different. We would look at one track. So this is a track in Italy, Monza. During racing, cars would race around the track. As soon as they hit the start, that would be considered as one lap. One round is considered as one lap. And they need to do 53 laps on this track to complete the race. That is around 306 kilometers or 190 miles. It takes around 90 to 120 minutes to complete the whole race. And the speeds are insane. Formula One car can go up to 320 km per hour and then they need to stop within a fraction of seconds. And that is a huge force on the driver. Driver go through an immense physical conditioning. In each race, driver lose around 2 to 3 kgs of weight. That is the level of physicality involved for drivers now in the track it's not at the same level there is an elevation if you see at that corner track is at the lower point here it's a medium and over here it's very high so they need to design car in a way that it can go up and down and it's not at the same level another thing i want to talk to you about is the turns there are 11 turns on this track and each turn have names and some Turns are symbolic and people talk about turns, particularly on this track. This turn is known as Parabolica and it's very interesting. It's a turn where they go at a high speed for around 7 seconds. And then each track is divided into different sectors, 1, 2, 3. Some players are good at a sector 1, some are doing well at 2 and 3. So it's just to make the game more understandable, they divide the track into 3 different sectors. If we take a look at the top view of the track, this is how it looks like the three sectors and then you would see DRS detection zone. What is that? So for that, I want to introduce the DRS. It's called the drag reduction system. So if you see the bottom one, DRS is closed. So this flap is closed, whereas in the op above one, it's open. So DRS is open. So when this flap is open, the drivers can gain six miles per hour so they can go faster when the flap is open when flap is closed the speed is low so when can they do it they can do it in the drs zone so if you see on the track there's a white car so this white car and behind the white car let's say there's a yellow car if the difference between these two cars is less than one second where at drs detection zone so when they detect here if the time difference is less than one second so by the time they are here yellow can open the DRS and get more speed, whereas white is not allowed to. So because yellow is behind and less than one second, yellow can increase the speed and overtake here. So this is one of the DRS zone. There's another DRS zone here. So these are the two places where DRS can be used. Everywhere else, it needs to be closed. What you would see is a red car here. Can this car use DRS? No, because there's no car in front of this car, which is less than a second in front of this car. So this player cannot use DRS. There's one more condition that during first two laps, DRS cannot be used. Let's talk about the car setup. Now car setup is very important. If you see here in this setting, you would have maximum downforce, which means car will be on the track and it can take tight turns without losing the stability. If you go onto the other side, it's for maximum top speed. So you have a great top speed, but you have a less of a downforce. So the traction is little bit lower, but the speed is high. And depending upon the track, they need to make these adjustments. So to give you an example, the track of Monaco, you see a lot of tight turns are there. So for this circuit, they need maximum downforce and that's where they go with the maximum downforce setting whereas the track which we were talking about which is Italy Monza you see a lot of straights a lot of straights so they need more speed so they would go for maximum top speed setting whereas some tracks require both of them 
for example abu dhabi you have straights you have corners as well so you need a setting which can give you speed but also can have the stability and the downforce required to take those tight turns here are more statistics about these track i won't go into detail but you can take a look at it maximum speed are different for different tracks and number of turns are different number of laps are different so a lot of variations so you need to make adjustment when you go from one track to another track let's talk about race structure how race is organized in formula one so the race is organized over three days friday saturday and sunday many people don't know this so on friday the teams will do two practice sessions so they would run their cars and get the data and make the adjustment to the car to get the maximum performance out of the car on Saturday, they have another practice session where they again get the data, see how the changes have been made, whether it works fine or not. And then they have the qualifying. Now, qualifying is very important. Here, you would see, you know, at the starting of the race, the cars are standing in a line. So how do they decide who would stand first, who would stand last? That is done based upon the qualifying. So the qualifying would determine the grid position. And how do they determine? It's a whole lot of story. I would just give you a high level overview. So what happens in the qualifying is each driver would take laps. Each driver could go around the track and take laps. And whatever their lap time is, they take the fastest lap time. So here, if you see A's fastest time was in lap two, C's in one, B's in three. Doesn't matter how many lap they take. They take the minimum time the fastest time and based upon the fastest time they decide who completed the lap in the fastest time and based upon that the grid position is defined now the person who's standing first in the grid that person is called as a pole position so it's a title that person got the pole position it gets into the record book after qualifying grid position is defined and then comes the sunday the race day the exciting day now i do want to point out that the qualifying is very important because based upon qualifying you have your starting grid here if you see the person in the front has high chances to win the race the person in the last has very low chances to win the race because there are so many cars in front of this person and it is really difficult to overtake because there's not much position on the track as well. Here we would see that the person who start well, end well, overtaking is tough. If you see the race starts, beep, 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 and there they go and the race starts. And if you see it's difficult to overtake less space and if we go into the driver's spot, there is not much space and driver needs to make the adjustment. If you see when you go to the corners the overtake becomes really difficult there is no space to overtake so overtaking on corner is very difficult but overtaking on this straight is easy here we would take a look at a from the car perspective so first we would take a look at the corner turn how overtake is done it's little bit difficult and then we would see overtake on the straight which is easy here we go in the corner and is trying to overtake but there's very small space and need to make overtake challenging but if it's a straight just go put the drs and boom there you go see so on straight overtake is easy on corner it's tough now talk about race strategy so in race strategy, drivers need to make decision which kind of tires would they use. There are three primary kinds of tires, soft, medium, and hard. And the speed is very fast for the soft tires. The hard tires can take 1.4 seconds more than the soft tire to complete one lap. So the soft tire are faster. So you might be thinking, well, why not everyone uses the soft tire, right? It's the fastest they should use it. But there is one more factor, durability. So soft tire, they doesn't last long. They can last for like 15 laps, whereas the hard tire can last really long, around 40 to 60 laps. So using soft tire, you get the speed, but they last, they doesn't last long. But the hard tire, you doesn't get the speed, but they last long. So you would be thinking, let's just use the soft tire and just keep changing. But when you change the tire, it takes time. It takes around 20 to 25 seconds and you don't want to lose a lot of time. So you don't want to change tires a lot of time. 
Here I would show you how tire change is done. What you see on the top is the main track where the speed is around 320 km per hour and what you see at the bottom is a pit lane. So this different road, this road would be pit lane. If anyone need to change tire, they need to come here and these are garage. So for each team, they have their garage. So both drivers need to come to their garage to change tires or change anything. Mostly it's changing tire. Thing is, in the pit lane, there's a rule. You cannot drive more than a limited speed. So once they enter here, they need to drive under that limited speed all the way till here. Whereas the other players would go boom. So they would lose a lot of time. Here we would see that the yellow car is coming for a tire change. A lot of players passed him. Now at the tire change, they need to change four tires. Changing four tire doesn't take minute, it just take them seconds. So 2.4 second is average for changing four tires. And the world record is 1.82 seconds. Imagine 1.82 seconds to change all four tires. But changing tire is not the big issue. It is the speed that is in the pit lane. If you see, it takes around 20 to 25 seconds to go into the pit lane because speed is limited on the main track you can cover in four seconds so if you do a pit stop you lose around 12 to 14 seconds here is a real example you see on the right hand side right hand side is where the pit lane is done the car comes in and they have all the engineers they change the tires and boom tire change is done and the car is ready to go and now it will join the main track so changing tire takes less time, but the restriction of the pit lane, the limited speed, then you lose a lot of time. We talked about the dry tires. So all these three kinds of tires are known as dry tires. If there is a rain, then there are wet tires. So there's an intermediate tire if it's a, you know, okay rain, but if it's a heavy rain, then they go for extreme tires. So depending upon weather, they need to make those decisions. If weather is fine, they go with dry tire and then it's raining, they change the tire. And when it again, rain goes away, then everyone is in the pit lane. There's a traffic in the pit lane that adds so much more into the game. And to give you just an idea, the wet tires can throw 65 liters of water per second. So Formula 1 is the pinnacle of engineering. That's it. I hope you got that now. Here what I'm showing is, you know, different type of tire. Here is the wet tire, a lot of grooves, intermediate tire. These are dry tires, so no grooves because, you know, there's no water. They need more traction. So in the race of 52 lap, a team might decide to start with soft and then after 15 change and get the soft again and after 33 change it to medium and medium can last from 33 to 52. And then another strategy could be they start with hard and hard can last till 35 laps and then they change soft. So they go easy and then they go fast. Here team would be making two stops so they would be losing a lot of time. Here they are making only one stop, so less time. So teams have this strategy to make and this is so critical. If you mess it up, then you mess up the whole race. Remember, it takes time to change tires, so you need to be smart about it. Let's talk about the rewards of each race. Person who starts at the first position in the race is called as pole position. It's a reward. It doesn't count, but it's just a pride thing. And then the person who wins the race is called race winner. And the top three players are called as a podium players. And it is called as a podium finish. After the race, they use the champagne and celebrate. That's pretty iconic using champagne and celebration. Apart from these three players, top 10 players get points. First player get 25 points, second get 18, third, fourth, so and so forth. So the 10th player get one point. Players from 11th to 20, they get zero points. So if you're 11th or if you're 20th, it doesn't matter. You are at the same level. It hurt. But that's the harsh reality of Formula 1. Top 10 gets the point. And then they also give a one point for the person who did the fastest lap on the race. So players accumulate these points in each race and at the end of the season, the player has the highest point, wins the championship and the team, that means the two drivers in the team, they combine their points and the team that has the highest points wins the team championship. 
for team team championship is important for driver driver championship is important so the two teammates are competing against each other and because they have the same car they can be compared so in formula one your teammate is your biggest rival i don't see this in any other sport so your teammate is your biggest rival in formula one because he has the same car you both will be compared you can't really compare with other teams because they have different car so that is really a unique element and the dynamics is so interesting because team want both of them to do well but the drivers are selfish they want to do good for themselves so that's where it gets really heated up let's say you turned on a tv and formula one race is going on there are so many numbers on the screen how do you make out what is going on let me help you my friend so on the top left corner what you see is lap 35 of 53 what it means is 35th lap is going on and total 53 laps so we are you know pretty much into the second half of the race then what you see is the gas ghastly is leader and science is plus four so science is four second behind the ghastly you might be thinking well why is it four seconds shouldn't it be distance yeah so they figured it out that distance is relatively hard for people to imagine how far they are so they just do second second is easier to think so four second far so he need to drive faster to cover four second and if we look at the last driver he's 38 second behind the leader so all these times are in respect to the leader people at the bottom you see out all those people are out because their car got damaged or they got into accidents so right now only 16 people are running in the race then you see this clock at the top what you see is the fastest lap Lewis Hamilton hit the fastest lap at 1 minute 22 seconds and then 746 milliseconds and what you see here is these two cars are racing against each other and what they show here is the data related to these two cars so number seven Raikkonen and Stroll and the data what they are trying to show you is lap 31 Raikkonen took 125.064 and Stroll was able to complete lap 31 in 0.6 second less than this person which means he was faster in lap 31 in 32 he was fast 33 he was fast 34 he was ultra fast that means he should be able to overtake Raikkonen right now so you can take a look at this data to figure out what is going on between these two people you can take a look at this data to figure out who is leading the race how far are the people behind kind of take a look at these two are close these two are close so these two players are close. That's how when you turn on the TV, you can look at it. And once you understand the rivalry between the players and the team, and then it gets really interesting. We talked about car setup based upon the track and the grid position that is based upon qualification, types of tires and race strategy, weather. And I hope I was able to share the joy of the Formula One. And now you are on my side wondering, wow, Formula One is amazing. And not really, why do people watch Formula One? I hope you enjoy the video, subscribe the channel as I release new videos and like and share and check out my other videos. I explain sports in an easy way, fun way and I share the joy I have for the sports with the people who are new to the sports because sports is a blessing to humanity. Thank you so much.